An Iranian-made Shahid drone belonging to the Russian army crashed into a residential building in Belgorod region on November 5. Images of the drone hitting the building and the moment of the explosion were spread on Telegram channels. It should be noted that there was a massive drone attack on the territory of Ukraine on November 5. Following the attack, one of the drones returned to Russian territory. The Ukrainian side reported that it was the same drone that crashed into the residential building. One person was injured as a result of the incident. Defense Intelligence of Ukraine has reported that a Russian Army Mi-24 attack helicopter has been destroyed by fire in Moscow Oblast. A Russian Mi-24 attack helicopter was destroyed on the night of 9 to 10 November 2024 at the Klin-5 airfield in Moscow Oblast, Defense Intelligence of Ukraine said. It is reported that the burnt helicopter belonged to the 92nd Special Purpose Instructor and Research Helicopter Squadron of the 344th Center for Combat Use and Retraining of Flight Personnel of the Russian Armed Forces. Defense Intelligence of Ukraine reiterates that the occupier will be punished fairly for every war crime committed against Ukraine, the statement said. The video release included a message from the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine, for every war crime committed against Ukraine, the occupier will face just punishment. The Mi-24 helicopter, valued at approximately $12.5 million according to open-source estimates, is a unique model, combining the roles of an armored gunship and a troop carrier, with the capacity to transport up to eight passengers. Developed by Mil Moscow Helicopter Plant, it has served since 1972 and remains in use in 58 countries today. Known for its high speed, the Mi-24's wings contribute significant lift, enabling faster speeds than other helicopters of its class. A modified Mi-24B variant, named the A-10, was also used in speed and time to climb record. Mobilization is going badly not only in Ukraine, but also for the Russians. The first clashes between the Ukrainian armed forces and the North Korean military have already taken place at the front. Unayan media outlet asked whether Russia's other partners are ready to reinforce it with cannon fodder. Recently, Ukrainian Defense Minister Rustem Umarov said that the Ukrainian Defense Forces have already clashed with the DPRK military at the front. And although these clashes were small-scale, Overall, the situation is an unpleasant wake-up call. In particular, NATO's Secretary General Mark Rutte spoke about this earlier, noting that the North Korean troops that are currently fighting on the side of Russia against Ukraine pose a threat to global security. After all, in his opinion, the DPRK's participation in the war would mark the beginning of a much darker phase of a long conflict. The fact is that former U.S. State Department official David Tafuri said even before the presidential race ended that three more countries were ready to send their troops to the war in Ukraine. In his opinion, this would be 
Iran, Syria, and even China. Even if we do not take into account that Tafuri is just a former official who hardly has current intelligence data and only gives out his thoughts without specifics, the presence of foreigners in the Russian troops is an open secret. Since the beginning of the full-scale invasion, citizens of Cuba, Somalia, Nepal, Syria, Serbia, India, China, various African countries and the like have been spotted in the ranks of the aggressor. If we are talking about military advisors and instructors, then they have been fighting on the side of Russia, to put it mildly, for more than one day, more than one month, and more than one year, notes military analyst and ATO veteran Yevgeny Diki. Let me remind you that Iran sent not only shaheds to Russia, but also instructors from the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, who taught Russians how to launch these shaheds directly in combat conditions. That is, the first such UAVs were launched into our cities by Iranian hands, not Russian. And when this training was completed, an assembly line for these shaheds was set up in the Russian Alabuga. And there, again, Iranian engineers were involved. According to him, when North Korea had not yet started trading cannon fodder, but had already begun supplying its ballistic missiles, their crews arrived in the Russian Federation along with these ballistic missiles. At the very least, they launched these missiles at our cities together with the Russians. And most likely, they even did it instead of the Russians. Ukrainian National Guard Reserve Major Oleksiy Hetman says that the pace of Russian offensive actions has increased. The Russian army is advancing up to two kilometers every day. That means the pace of its offensive has increased. The Russians can cut the main road to Kurokov, which we use to provide logistics supplies. If the main logistics routes are cut, there are backup routes, but they go through fields, noted Hetman on Espresso TV. According to a veteran of the Russian-Ukrainian war, weather conditions, particularly rain, can make it difficult to move due to washed-out roads, which is dangerous. Obviously, there is a threat of encirclement of troops around Kurokov, and this is part of the Russians' plans. It is believed that attacking large cities head-on is not a smart tactic. Usually, they try to cover and cut off the logistics so that it is difficult for a military unit in the city to defend itself. The unit may be left without any defense capabilities at all, forcing it to retreat or to be surrounded," added Hetman. Over autumn, large chunks of Ukrainian territory, sometimes including entire cities, have been lost on a near-daily basis in southern Donetsk Oblast, while Russian forces have also made operationally significant gains near Toretsk, Chasivyar, Kupiansk, as well as on their own soil in Kursk Oblast. The increasing pace of Russia's advance is evidence of how the war of attrition that many officials and analysts in the West had called a stalemate had slowly but surely been flowing in Moscow's favor. With manpower shortage and systemic structural issues at the heart of Ukraine's predicament, the options for Kyiv and its partners to stabilize the front in the face of Russia's acute resource advantages look limited. The most critical sector of the front line as of early November, is in the southern half of the Ukrainian-controlled part of Donetsk Oblast. After advancing quickly beyond Abdiivka toward the key logistical hub of Pokrovsk over summer, Russian forces pivoted south in early September, cutting off a large pocket of Ukrainian-held land west of the Vovcha River with the successful capture of the city of Ukrainsk. Further Russian advances toward Pokrovsk, initially slowed over autumn, halted at the gates of the city of Selidov, where the relatively fresh 15th National Guard Brigade took over the defense of the mining city, once home to over 22,000 people. Over the next two months, however, instead of storming Selidov, the Russian troops picked away at the fields on either flank, which were both manned by more exhausted Ukrainian brigades plagued by personnel losses. 